this podcast with hosts and guests who don't have a stick up their ass. Yeah, I said it. Damn! Well, if so, welcome to your new home, brother. Brother. This is My Fence Life. Woo! Our three passions are beer, bourbon, and business. And probably in that order. We're bringing on business owners who share tips, tricks, and behind-the-scenes stories to help your business be more successful. And we drink during the show. So no matter what industry you're in, pop a cold one and come on in. Welcome to the My Fence Life Studio. Hey, hey, what's happening, Fence Life? Oh, we back again with Matt Warner, part two. Part two of uh, the Don't Go Broke Cash Flow Survival Guy with Matt Warner. He's the man. Man, the myth, the legend, right? Definitely, definitely not the man. Uh, <laughs> definitely just a man trying to live in this world and trying to trying to make a difference. Oh, man, we appreciate you. We appreciate you. So look, man. Last week we uh, we ran through some uh, some different scenarios. What is cash flow? What are common cash flow challenges? How can small business owners create a cash flow forecast? We even talked about strategies to uh, to get to improve your cash flow, and we also talked about how to handle late payments because that definitely affects your cash flow. And uh, this week we're going to talk about what role does budgeting play. In your cash flow management, that's going to be our first question, Matt. And I think we kind of touched on that last week about, um, you know, maybe not budgeting, but we talked about how um, cutting expenses is a big deal. Yeah. You yeah. Know? It, it, you know, here's the thing, Dan. I, I'm going to be straight up with you. I, I don't build a budget for the entire year. I I build it kind of quarter by quarter. And we've grown so much that we usually end up having to revamp our budgets. So I build a quarter by quarter. And once first quarter gets done and we're in the first month of the second quarter, that's when I start evaluating where my budget is. And I try to make a constant adjustment if I see that we're, for instance, every year I budget for you know, four or five new computers. All of a sudden in the first quarter, we we've had to buy three or four computers. Now I'm like, Oh crap, we're not, we we need another, we're going to need some more computers later on the season. So now I'm constantly looking for that, but I have a list of things that I'm constantly trying to reevaluate and readjust every quarter. I don't like doing an annual budget. It just, for us with our growth and, and what we're doing, we're very fortunate that, that we are growing, but you have to constantly be changing and adding to that budget. Yeah. I like the way that sounds, man, because things are constantly, you know, moving it. We're, we're an, or, we're, we're an organism, right? It's organic. Yeah. And we're constantly growing or, or we're downsizing a little bit, you know, um, it got crazy, man. My guys were eating up the work so fast that I ended up taking a crew off the road, got rid of some sp- got rid of some guys that I felt like weren't doing everything that they needed to do. And man, I did that and talk about morale go up, Matt, man. Yeah. It's amazing. Well, I mean, isn't it? it was crazy. My, my morale went up. The guys started producing more feet per man per hour. And we all just went out and hung out this past weekend. I've, I've I can't tell you how many times I said, Hey, let's meet at walk ons and watch the ball game. And like two guys will show up. I had all but one show up and he didn't show up because he didn't have a babysitter, you know? Yeah. And I, I told him they could bring the kids, but he's got a little one. He's like, man, he wouldn't have done well, but everybody else showed up. And yeah. then I had people show up that didn't even work for me. They were just there because they just know the fence King and around town. And we had mentioned we were going to be there. Yeah. And I thought it was going to be over. And they were all like, man, we're having a great time. Let's go shoot some pools. So we well, all ended everybody, up there. Everybody wants to hang out with Dan, don't they? <laughs> I don't know about all that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, man. So um, we, we had to downsize a little bit because they were eating up the work so fast. 
And now I'm getting ready to put a third crew back on because things have settled in. And you know, I think it was that whole 4th of July, getting ready to start school. People weren't spending money, sure. you know, those kind of days. But, yeah, man, a, a budget helps us control control our expenses, plan for investments like computers, right? Yep. And, and it ensures that our cash flow remains positive. You know, um, you got to allocate funds. Absolutely. Constantly. Constantly. You, you kind of need to build two budgets, though. You need to build your budget that you know you're going to have your your fixed costs with your your rent and and your light bills and the stuff that you're going to always do. And then then you have to build a budget that says, hey, what if we're growing? That way, at the end of each quarter, you evaluate your budget. You see where you're at, and if you're growing now in the third quarter, you better figure out a way to buy a truck or whatever you need. I usually call my dealer. So I, I buy from the same Ford dealer uh, that I've bought um, since 2012 when I bought my first real truck. Uh, from 2009 to 2012, we just used my old Tahoe and an enclosed trailer. And that was all we, that was all we had. Um, wow. So whenever we're going to buy a truck now, I'll call him four or five months ahead of time say, hey, I think I need a truck. Like right now, I just ordered two new Super Duties, but I told them, I said, I don't want them until January. Now, they might come in February and they might come in December. That's that's just the market nowadays with trucks. But I'm constantly evaluating my budget and watching my cash flow. Because one thing I try to do is, you know, I buy all my trucks. There's certain people out there that lease. I know Sean King and I have had this debate up and down. Uh, I don't like the leasing thing. I lease equipment, but I don't lease vehicles. I buy my vehicles. Um, but I always try to make sure that I put enough money down that I'm not going to affect my cash flow. But yet when I have that truck paid off, I won't I won't ever in that entire time that I'm making payments, I won't ever be upside down. So uh, you might be buying a used truck that's forty thousand dollars. You might want to put twelve or fifteen thousand dollars down. That way in three years, uh, while you're when you get that truck paid off. That whole entire time, you're never upside down because you never know when you're going to have a winner. You know what mm -hmm. I? You know what I mean by a winner, right? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. So, so we have what we call Operation Winner here that I can, I can, I can start going into that at any given time, and that's when we run into a time where the work isn't coming in very fast and we're slow. So, what can we get rid of? So, I've, I know this. Do you mind if we go a little bit off the cash flow? Yeah, thing? go ahead. One one trick that I've learned over the last probably three years is is things ebb and flow. And us as 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 um, business owners, we make mistakes once in a while, and sometimes we we burn up a little bit too much cash, or we get tight, or whatever. So what I did is I I make a list of everything that I think I can sell, and how fast I think I can sell it. Because sometimes you just need to get rid of stuff. You need to purge the system and say, all right, I'm getting rid of that. Matter of fact, anybody that knows me at all knows that I love my Bronco. I, I love it. I, um, I even love it with those dork, dorky stickers that you stuck on there. I even left one of them on there for you. <laughs> Did but, you? Yeah. But I had to put that thing up for sale this spring. And, and it's paid for. And, and I, I put it up and, and I had two offers and I asked both of those people to give me two weeks. And I was very honest with them. I said, listen, I don't really want to sell it, but I might have to, but I had um, a couple other things. I had uh, two older trailers that I wanted to sell. I had uh, an older truck that I wanted to sell. I had a tractor. I had bought a four wheel drive tractor because I do I do a little hobby farming on the side. Well, I listed all those things, and my my Bronco was like my fifth or sixth thing that I had listed, and I sold all that stuff, and I raised about one hundred and fifteen thousand dollars in about twenty days. Now that one hundred twenty thousand dollars got us through a little bit of a tight spot. I call that Operation Winner. So I implemented that, and and it was a little bit of a test to see how fast I could raise some money. But I've got about three hundred thousand dollars worth of assets that I can get rid of. That's something that I'm constantly looking at. What can I sell if I have to? I don't like to sell stuff. I'm kind of a I like to keep it in for in case we need it. 
But those that older trailer that I had, I loved getting rid of that thing because I really didn't like it anyhow. I just hadn't taken the time to fix it up and sell it. Mm-hmm. Does that make any sense? That's a yeah. way. To, that's a way to create a little cash flow. Get some money in the door so I can pay some bills. Yeah. Hopefully, that, oh, hopefully that's a little bit of a nugget. No, I don't know. And I mean, and that's that's not something you want to do, but sometimes you got to do it, and it's nice when you can do it. By the way. I did not sell the Bronco. <laughs> that was going to be my next question. I know that Bronco. I saw you uh, you posted something on it not too long ago. And I was like, I know the Bronco didn't go. <laughs> you put me in that. That thing for me is like a time machine. And as business owners, once again, I apologize. We're not talking about cash flow. So you know what? Maybe we should just ditch the cash flow thing because I'm going to tell you, here's the, here's the nuts and bolts of it, folks. Live amongst your means. Hold on to every penny you have because it's a lot harder to make it than spend it. The third thing is every once in a while, go take a Bronco ride and clear your head so you make smart decisions. And that Bronco is my time machine. You have to be able to make good, smart decisions as a business owner. There you have it. Yeah. Well, you know, Shane Cat and I were talking about that not too long ago. You know, I like just, that dude. He's yeah. awesome. He's a great guy, man. He really is. Yeah. Uh, him and I have a lot of fun together, and we go back and forth with all kinds of crazy stuff. But I tell you what, at the end of the day, uh, Shane is a really good guy, and he's got a lot of knowledge with him. I don't know if you heard, but him and I went in together and U.S. Hammer. And U.S. Hammer is going to make a My Fence Life edition black U.S. Hammer. And Sean, I mean, Sean, and um, Shane's going to give it away through Midwest Fence Supply. Oh, nice. Yeah. And, uh, Shane's going to end up selling their uh, their drivers now. So we're doing a little three way deal to promote Midwest, promote My Fence Life, and promote uh, U.S. Hammer. So I met that guy in Vegas at the fence show with U.S. Hammer. Really nice guy. That's awesome. Really nice guy, man. So, huh? That's good stuff, Daniel. Yeah, man. We're just trying to work together, you know. So, uh, should a small business owner get a get a lot of credit for cash flow management? Yeah, we talked a little bit about this last week. That's what I use my line of credit at the bank for. I use it for that because it helps me out tremendously. Um, There's times where I got to dip into it. You know, I was thinking that today when I realized I didn't have a those invoices that were supposed to be sent out weren't sent out. I was like, Oh, so I might have to hit that, you know, cause it was a decent amount of money that was sitting out there. Yeah. You know, and it helps us avoid, you know, unnecessary debt if we got to, you know, or get that 2% discount because you got that little nest egg sitting over there. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, the idea too is to have that line of credit set up ahead of time. So you're not, Panic. scrambling for it when you yeah. need it yeah that was that was a huge lesson i learned from you matt was to become best friends with your banker yeah get to know that him. was huge man yeah, yeah. same Warm. thing for shopping same thing with your car dealer same thing with your insurance you know my my i deal with one dealer i buy i buy ford trucks i'm i'm a ford guy and i just deal with one guy and i call him up he knows the specs he knows what i want he knows my goals I just deal with one guy. So I got a bar and grill that I go to called Times Grill. And it's definitely not a lot of younger get people in there. It's got a mixture of a few. But I tell you what, man, the wealth of knowledge that's in there, there's guys that, you know, uh, the, C- the reason why I'm with Hancock Whitney Bank is because the CFO of Hancock Whitney goes in there, drinks, watches football. Yeah. You know, it's people like that. Um, just like, you know, I'm, I'm taking a bunch of vitamins and stuff now. One of the guys in there is a nutritionist. And he helped take, me. Hey, you man. Take, what are you taking vitamins for? Just different things, man. Um, I'll take like grapeseed every day. Uh, supposed to help and keep your prostate healthy and just things like that. Yeah. Um, taking another thing. Wait, are, um, you, are you improving on your, uh, your, 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 uh, your physical health? Are you trying to get more healthy? Are you trying to, are you, you okay, Dana? 
Yeah, man. Well, I, I, I took a little break from myself and was working on the business for a while. And I just finally was like, all right, it's time to work on me. And I reached the goal that I wanted to reach and some things in my life took a toll. And I was like, I just got to work on those. And so, next man, thing you know, this. you'll be doing the old Hercules, Hercules, Hercules. <laughs> Yeah, man. So, you know, Pepper stood by my side, man. She's, uh, she's always been one when she sees, I got something that I'm trying to go after. I got a goal I'm trying to reach. She's always, you know, stood there beside me and, and, you know, I, I told her at dinner, I had her and some friends of ours, um, uh, for dinner for her birthday. And, um, uh, I got her a diamond tennis bracelet. Wow. So I gave it to the maitre d and I was like, you know, cause I, I know the maitre d' at this restaurant we go to and I said, Hey, do me a favor, bring this out like before the advertisers and stuff. So she was like, awesome. So she did it. And she looked at me like, what is this for? You know, it's not our usual birthday Christmas th deal. And I said, well, for the past 16 plus months, you have let me neglect you, neglect our relationship, neglect birthdays, holidays, our family, everything, because I was trying to reach a goal and I've reached that goal. And the least I could do is give you something in payment to say, Hey, I appreciate what you've done and how you stood by me because most people wouldn't have stood by somebody that was working 15, 16, 17 hours a day, seven days a week. And she was there and she dealt with it and put up with it. So, yeah, man, it was, uh, it, 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 it takes a lot, man. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. You took yeah. a little sabbatical. Yeah, and I did. And, and you know what, then we have, to, we have to make some changes, right? And change is difficult. Yeah. So then my health took a hell of a beating and you were, you know, you and I had spoke about it and yeah. you started keeping me accountable and I ended up getting a, a treadmill in the office next door and, Man, I went to the doctor back in early May. Good. Here it is, what, uh, mid-September almost. And my blood work is done 180 degree turn. I'm down like 67 pounds. I mean, it's, yeah, I'm walking every day. And matter of fact, uh, Rachel's my accountability partner. She bugs me every day. Did you walk? Did you work out? Did you do your yoga? That's good. <laughs> it's good. She's, and you know, the, 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 the toughest part is the is the commitment to do it. When you get done doing it, you're like, man, I'm glad I did that. But boy, getting yeah. your mindset, getting those little demons, that little bitch voice in the back of your head to get out of there and say, I don't have time to do this or I don't want to do it. That's that's the tough part in accepting change. You know, it, change is so difficult. And we're in my Monday morning means we've been talking about change a lot and and, uh, and what it means and um, well, well, here's what I did today with the guys. So, uh, can we, can we do a little, little yeah. episode, a little something here? Yeah, man. Go ahead. So, so take your fingers and do this, do this. Okay? okay. Now take it apart, shake your fingers out. Okay. Now do okay. this again. Okay. Okay. We're gonna do it one more time. Take it out, shake your hands and okay. do this. Okay. Now I was watching your hands. You know, you did that the same every single time. But now I want you to do this. Do what I do. Switch it just one like that. Ooh. Does that feel a little awkward? Yeah. That's change. That's what change is all about. Now we're going to take our hands apart. We're going to do ch jazz hands again. And we're going to put them back the same way. And you watch how difficult it is. Ready? All right. Do it. Jazz hands. Now do it. Did you go back to the same or did you switch? No, I went back to the same. That's difficult. You have to try to think about it to do it. But change feels awkward. But just like the folding your hands, it feels awkward. Yeah. But once you do it and you get used to it, it becomes easier. That as business owners, we have to be willing to change. You have to be willing to set a budget. You have to be willing to uh, know what your cash flow is. You have to be willing to hold your guys accountable. You have to be willing to support your team. You have to be willing to do all those things. And if things aren't working, you have to make a change and you have to be willing to be, or you have to be open to the idea of change this way. And sometimes you have to do it this way. That's change. Yeah. That's a good lesson, Matt. Super nice guy. 
You like that? I like that. I like your name up there. <laughs> That's that positive thinking. It is, man. So, I'm, I'm so not, hey, Dano, I'm gonna let, let you in a little secret. What's that? I'm not always a really nice guy. <laughs> I bet. I don't want to get on the bad side either. I don't ever want to learn that. I mean, I don't mind sitting back watching it happen to somebody else, but I don't want to be on the receiving end of the not nice guy. If you know what I mean. I know exactly what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> so, man, what are some warning signs of cash flow problems and how small business owners spot them early? Go to the next one. That's I think that's the last one. That's an easy one. Everybody knows the warning signs. You look at your bank account, you don't have the dang money. <laughs> exactly. That's a no brainer, man. You, you look at it and you're like, where the heck's all the money? I've been working my tail off. Then yeah. it's, it's too late by then. That's that that you got to be proactive way ahead of that time. So that one's an easy one. Come on, throw me another yeah, it one. It is. Give me another throw one. Throw you another one. Um I don't have another one. Hold on, let me think. That's it. Come on. I put everything I had into this show, man. All right. Let, let me <laughs> let me tell you. When you get to the end of the year and you've worked your tail off and your books tell you that you've made a hundred thousand dollars, but you don't have a damn dime in your bank account, that sucks. Yes. Because now you got to figure out how do I get to the next phase? How do I get over that hump? How do I get to the end of the year? You've You've got to start looking at this stuff way, way, way ahead of time. If you have a warning sign, you're probably too late. You should be predicting it way, way, way ahead of time. And growth is the number one killer of cash flow. It's easy to run a business that stays stagnant and stays the same. Anybody can do it because you're used to it. It's the same thing over and over. But when you grow, you need more equipment. You need more people. You need more payroll. Your insurance goes up. All these things. You need a bigger office. That's what eats up your cash flow, folks. And if you're not looking at it on a weekly basis, you're going to get in trouble. Amen. That's Woo! about it. You're right. Because once you once you figure it out, it's too late. That warning sign is, is it needs to be you need to be predicting it way ahead of time. If you if if you see you're out of cash, you're you're already in trouble. You better you Definitely. better get to your bank and get to your bank quick and, and start living amongst your means. You hit the nail on the head, baby. Anything else you want to say about cash flow? Did you just do three snaps and a and a and a twirl? I did. You, just did. you want me to Z-snap you? <laughs> That's my Z-snap. Oh man! Well, look, man, I got. I, I'm done. Good. We, we, we hit our time limit, man. It was great talking to you. We need to have a show where we just sit, just sit back and talk about anything. We don't have a topic. We don't have an outline. We just sit well, back and you shoot need, the breeze. You need to come up and see my new office I'm building. When's it going to be done? I'll come. I'm headed to DC uh, in the mid October for NASA's you should, deal. You should come up towards the end of November. The end of November is going to be awesome. We're going to be in my, my, I got a, a new office I'm building. I'm remodeling it. It's going to be epic. I, I'm going to, I love it. I'm so excited for it. What if we did this? What if you made room for Pepper and I at your table for Thanksgiving? Come on. There's always room for you, Dana. Tell Melanie I'm coming. We're going to come hang out and, and eat some turkey. Woo! Let's go. All right. Yeah, I'm going to tell today. Pepper. I'll see you huh? at Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. I'm going to have a turkey hat. I love it. Are we done? Yeah, man. It was great talking to you. Guys, y'all keep on fencing. You've been listening to My Fence Life. Yes, we like to have fun. Beer, bourbon, and business. And although we have fun, we take our business very seriously. Dan Blanc is known as the Fence King, and he's been providing high-quality fence solutions since 1999. He's connected to industry leaders, business leaders, financing experts, and marketing gurus that will be on the show to talk about their success stories. To find out more about us, hit the website at myfencelife.com. Listen to the show wherever you consume your content. We are everywhere. Apple, Spotify, and Google Podcast. See you next time on My Fence Life.